Welcome back, everybody. This is Dylan Lane here uh, with the BS Academy. Just got done recording an episode, and wow, hope you guys enjoy it as much as I enjoyed recording it. AJ and I got to sit down with one of the best receivers north of the U.S.-Canada border, one of the best receivers in the Canadian Football League, plays for the Edmonton Eskimos. Hope you enjoy this episode we have with Mr. Ricky Collins. All righty, guys. This is Dylan Lane and AJ Connor again back with you guys from the BS Academy here. Uh, we've got a very special guest here on our show today, uh, former a and Commerce alumni, uh, record holder for most touchdowns in a season with 14, and current player of the Edmonton Eskimos up in the Canadian Football League. Uh, BS Academy is proud to present and welcome to the show, Ricky Collins. Thank you for being on the show with us here today, Ricky. Hey. Uh, no problem, man. Appreciate y'all having me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, man, uh, one of the things that we, we uh, remember, man, is just from going to Commerce with you back in the day. We were there, you know, that year that y'all had won the uh, Lone Star Conference Championship in however long and the, you know, crazy run you went on that season. Uh, man, if you could just tell us a little bit about what it was like being playing with that team uh, back in – I know it's been some time back in 2014, <laughs> uh, the season. I mean, just some of the alumni here, we, we'd love to, you know, hear – um, you know, how, how it was playing with Coach Carthel, the run you went on, um, as well as, you know, even that record-breaking performance against ET- ETBU. Okay, cool, cool. So, all right, let's start off with everybody getting recruited, man. You know, uh, when I had got recruited to come to Commerce, I was actually at home working uh, the graveyard shift at Walmart. I'd been out of football okay. for a year. And then one of my close friends um, – CJ Johnson, he played on the team with us. Uh, he was a DB. He uh, he told me he was one of the comers. He was like, um, Coach Kobe Carthel is going to be the head coach down there. And I had knew Kobe from Coach Carthel from um, my days in junior college. He had, when he him and his dad was at West Texas, he tried to actually recruit me and get me to come out there. But I'm a little kid from East Texas. I don't want to go to West Texas. There's literally nothing out there, you know? So – uh, yeah. that our, our paths went separate ways, and then we ended up meeting up with each other again at Commerce. So when I found out he was going, he was going to be the head coach, and then I had a numerous amount of friends, you know, like that I had played against or like grew up with, and like CJ, and then the quarterback Tyreek Rollison, I had played against him before in junior college. So it was that's that's how uh, it came about me going to Commerce. Um, so playing with those guys. That team that we had that year when we made our run and um, to win the Long Star Conference that year, it was it was something special. You know, we had a lot of talent. It was a lot of talented players on that team. Like, hands down, the best team, one of the best teams I've ever played uh, played on and been a part of. Uh, from Let's start at the head of the, the head of the helm, the quarterback, Tyler Rollison. When you got a quarterback of his caliber, you know, like the guy that was uh, um, high school All-American, you know, like coming out of high school, you know, like, and that can make any throw on the field, it makes it that more easier being a receiver. And then when you have another receiver on the side of you, like Vernon Johnson, that can that you can have a friendly competition with in day in and day out in practice and in the games, it's, it just makes you level up your play your game of play every day, every day of practice, every uh, every game. On the defensive side, you know, we had CJ Johnson, we had uh Ronald Fields, um we had at our at our safety we had um Steven Baker, you know guys of that nature. We had um, Ashton Dorsey, my, one of my childhood friends that I grew up with in Tyler, then transferred from uh, University of Texas to Commerce. Um, mm-hmm. like, like I said, we had truly the, the best team in the LSC that year. And it was just like something like uh, amazing to be able to play with those guys um, day in and day out. Yeah, it was definitely uh, fun to watch you guys. It was definitely the first time, I feel like in a long time, since Commerce had a team like that, it kind of rejuvenated the football program there, to be honest. And y'all were, you know, you were obviously a huge part of that team uh, to be able to do that. Um, now, I know that you said that, you know, you were working the graveyard shift, you know, before you came back to uh, Commerce. Um, now, you did play football previously before Commerce, correct? Like at Midwestern State, but you had taken a layoff and then came back. Other than your friend getting involved, was there anything else that kind of helped you to get in contact with Carthel? as well to get that recruitment because or did you have to come for like a tryout like how did that work 
Um, actually, once I found out who the uh, head coach was, I told mm-hmm. my boy, I told CJ and um Tyreek, I was like, yo, tell Coach Carter to give me a call. Coach Carter gave me a call, and the rest was history. Like, two weeks after that, I, had, I started school two weeks late. So, two weeks after uh, that call, I was on Commerce campus. Okay. So, like when that. I say it was like, Co- Coach Carter, man, I will – I actually give him the last shirt I have on my back to Coach Carter <laughs> because of what he done for me. That's awesome. Man. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's great. We've heard, you know, we've heard a lot of good things about him. Now, um, after after that run in commerce, though, I mean, obviously you you've gone on. You're still playing right now. Um, you just came off of a, a record season uh, yardage wise for you know your time there in the Canadian mm-hmm. Football League, or well, record season really across the board. Most touchdowns you've had, most yards receiving. Obviously, you must be putting in some kind of work right now to, uh, you know, keep keep boosting uh, your play like you are doing. Um, kind of how's it been? You know, what's the journey been like from college to the professional game? I know that you, you know, went some time in Green Bay there and then, you know, landed in the CFL. And now you've been, you know, kind of taking the CFL by storm from what I was seeing. Um, you know, kind of how, how's that transition from, you know, college to the professional game been? And how and how is it playing up in Canada? Is it you know is it a lot more lively, uh, it, or is it lively in in Canada as well? That's something that we always you know want to we're always curious about you know as as Americans you know how is the Canadian Football League and what's it like playing there? Okay, got you, got you. So my I had I actually had like kind of a uphill battle you know sure. from after the uh, green after me my stand in Green Bay because I had tore my hip flexor so I had to rehab my hip flexor. For a moment, I couldn't. I had people, a lot of people don't know this, but for like a couple of months, I actually couldn't walk because of my hip flexor. So right. I had, like I said, it's been an uphill battle for me. So once I fully healed, I had um did a, a free agent tryout with uh, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. My agent had got me uh plugged in with that tryout, and I when I say I literally went and I ran a forty, I did a, a broad jump, vertical, and ran four routes. And coach um. What's uh what's his name? Coach um uh, Coach Jones. Coach Jones from the Riders. He he literally said, you know what, we I've seen all I need to see out of you. He the next day they had a country um drawn up for me and the, the rest was history as far as that aspect. Um now from going from Saskatchewan to where I'm at now, it's it's one of those where my first year I was kinda like learning the game, so I was just going off pure talent, you know, and um trying to still get the feel of the game. And what I was doing was trying to make it to where once I actually found out the game and understood the game, that I was going to be a force to be reckoned with. So fast forward to this year, now I truly understand the game, and next year is going to be my fifth year in the CFL, and it's one of those where it says, only person that can stop me is myself. So therefore, like I like I said, I understand the game to a, to a, to 100% right now, you know. Um, the game has slowed down to me a whole lot. Um, now, piggyback on what you said as far as the lively of the CFL, man, I love the CFL. I love playing in the CFL. There's so much excitement. Like, I highly recommend people to watch the CFL more because it's a lot of excitement. We do a lot of different things that the NFL don't do. Not not knocking the NFL at all because the NFL mm-hmm. is still the NFL, you know. But yeah, the, sure. to me, personally, the, the CFL is more exciting than the NFL because the CFL, they just let us play, you know. We, sure. like, you got, you got us receivers running towards a line of scrimmage, bro, <laughs> like, yeah. before the play, you know. Like okay, so y'all doing, like, like, yo-yo routes? Like, kind of before the, like, where you're kind of yo-yoing at the scrimmage like that? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Definitely. Sorry, I didn't mean to so cut you off. Had, No, no problem. So you have us doing that, like you like I said, the yo-yo routes, you know, like running towards the line of scrimmage before the uh, ball is snapped as opposed to NFL being stagnant at the line. Then you have, like, it's an extra guy on the field. You know, like it's 12 instead of 11, stuff like that. So the, the CFL is definitely worth it. It's, it's a lot of fun. I think a lot of people have the CFL misconstrued because it's Canadian football, you know, instead of the National Football League. So that's my intake on it. No, I I definitely agree with you, man. I I, I started tuning in a little bit more uh, to the CFL because I caught a couple of games on on ESPN. There were a couple of games. One of y'all's games actually was on there, and I remember uh, watching it. 
it, it seems like it's a lot more fast paced. Um, and then uh, another thing that threw me for a loop was the th- was the three downs. I didn't I didn't realize oh, yeah. that y'all that y'all only played three downs up there. And so therefore, like I'm a, I'm assuming that as a receiver, that's that's huge for you because I'm sure that takes a little bit of the running game away, correct? Oh, hundred percent. So that was one of those things like me trying to understand and learn the game. So my first preseason game in the CFL, I was so tired because it was a quick turnaround, like three plays, three plays, three plays. You on the field, three plays. Boom, you can be off the field. Now you on the field for one play. Now you on the field for four plays. So me trying to trying to gauge my energy for the for the segment of the game, it I just couldn't grasp it. You know, like three, mm-hmm. you have three downs as opposed to four downs. And those three downs, you have to you still have to get 10 yards. So, therefore, you have to pass the ball more. So, yeah, they do take the running game away, but people would be shocked that the running game actually works in the CFL a lot. Okay. Do you, so, uh, Rick is AJ. So, um, I know that there's a couple of commerce alums that played in the CFL as of recently. You know, uh, uh, Danny Mason, I think he plays for the Red Blacks. And then uh, Bryn Roy, I know he used to play in commerce back, a couple of years back. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you, are, you ever get to play with those guys and you, you talk to them when you're in the games and stuff like that? Oh, definitely. So, um, crazy story, Brim Roy, he was actually my teammate in, uh, in Saskatchewan my rookie year. He came okay. up, uh, I think it was towards the mid, mid part of the season, and he was there uh, for the whole rest of the season. He was, you know, like, I found out he went to Commerce, and so I was like, yo, bro. So, me and him kicked it a lot, you know. We still uh, stay in touch to this day. Uh, he was, he's really, he's a good teammate. Now, as far as Danny Mason, me and Danny, we text all the time. He, uh, I recently, he recently texted me, uh, asking me to go work out with him. So I got to, okay. uh, whenever I get a chance, I got to get up uh, to like in parts of Dallas and Carrollton where he worked out at his gym and, um, get a workout with him. But Danny Mason, he's like a big brother to me. So whenever we play each other, he always tries to get a cheap shot on me. <laughs> if y'all just trust me, if you go watch a game, he yeah. you'll see him trying to get a cheap shot on me, bro. It's it's funny because we talk about it during the game and after the game we just laugh. Yeah, yeah. So hey, man, I have a pretty interesting question for you. So I was uh I was looking on Twitter and uh I know you you follow you still follow the NFL obviously, but uh you know Stefan Diggs is on on the Bills now. Uh, mm-hmm. So I've been following his Twitter because he's kind of a funny dude, but he he's been asking everybody questions because I guess he he can't. He can't work out, leave his house, that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah. So, I got a question for you. If, all right, here you go. So, if, uh, what what's the most important part of um, creating separation uh, when when are you, we're in a receiver? So, is it speed, route running? Um, is it you know fake like head head movement, foot movement? What, what's the most important part of separation? Is he tweeted? He asked. He's like, you know, he's like separation is more more than speed. What do you think? Yeah. It's a- Separation is definitely more than speed. I mean, I let me. I'll talk about speed real quick. Speed is something you can't teach, mm-hmm. really, because you're either you know, like you can you can work to be fast, but the art of separation. If you know how to, if you have mastered the art of separation, you you are unstoppable. Yeah. If you can get space, if you can create space between you and the DB, yeah. nobody can stop you. Absolutely. Yeah, and 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 another thing too is he uh, he, he just man you should go, you should go on his Twitter because he just goes off. He has like a hundred questions, but um, if you could name your top five wideouts in the NFL to ever play, who would you who would you choose? Oh, I'm Put going with <laughs> all right. I'm going with Jerry Rice because he was ahead of his time in route running. Yeah, I'm going with Randy Moss because he's just a freak of nature. I'm going. Brandon Marshall, because he's a specimen. Yeah. Um, let's see. I got two more. I'm going yeah. with um, Randall Cobb because I learned a lot of his game. Um, let's see. I'm, and then my last one will have to be Dennis Bryant because he's a hometown kid. Well, not a hometown, but the East Texas kid. Yeah, he, so with Randall Cobb, man um, – so obviously you played for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, how Ed, so? What was your journey with the Packers? Like that experience uh, working with uh, <clears throat> working with the NFL players. Like how was that? Man, it was a uh, it was something eye opening because I seen the good side and the bad side. So the good side of it was 
you're healthy, you know, like you making plays, you moving up the charts. And that's what I was doing before I had got injured. So I was healthy. I was moving up the charts. I was actually getting reps with A-Rod and Randall Cobb and all them. Uh, Ray, and Randall Cobb, Aaron Rodgers, Jordy Nelson, and um, Devontae Adams. I was actually getting reps with those guys. And so those, if you know football, you know those are quality reps. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So, so now the business side came into it, and it's one of those where I had got hurt. Yeah. Now it's like, all right. You're you're worthless. You're worthless to us, but you're worth a you're you still worth something. So it was one of those I was playing the fence because I had got hurt, you know? And that's the only thing, like that's why I say it was eye opening because I really got to see both sides of the fence real fast at an early age. So you would you model uh, would you say you model your game after Randall Cobb or you just take aspects from from different players? Oh, I hundred percent take um take a bits and pieces of game from everybody yeah. that plays the receiver position. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's yeah. man. That's what an awesome experience to get to work with those guys. Like, best, you know, the best quarterback in the league and some of the best receivers in the league. You know, it's like, and that's that's invaluable experience. <laughs> it's awesome, man. No, for sure. Yeah. Like growing up, that's one of those like dreams that man. I want to be a professional football athlete. I want to go to the NFL. Yeah. I want to catch this one from one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And yet I live that dream, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Dude, that that's awesome, man, to just even have it, you know, been on the team, you know, what regardless of what what route happened from there. I mean, and where you're at now, I mean, you're still like you said, you're you're still killing it right now with what you're doing. You're overcoming adversity every time. Now, one question I do have, though, like in regards to like working on your game, uh, you had mentioned, you know, that you were trying to work out with uh, Danny Mason right now. Um, how much is what everything's going on right now? Obviously, we know like there's all these lockdowns going in place. Is that affecting you right now with like you being able to work out? Or are you still able to do like your offseason regiment as you normally would? Or, you know, are you having to kind of tweak things here and there? Kind of what what's going on with that? Um, I definitely have altered my um workout regimen because I have a, like a personal trainer at um at home, and so therefore I can't like actually go to his gym, go to our gym, or whatever. So now, um, like before I got on the show, I had I before I got on the show, I had got been got done working out like twenty minutes before the show. So uh, now I'm just working out the house. Me and my wife, we are actually like using um. 50 pound dog bags, dog food bags, you know, <laughs> like yeah. to do like squats and um, bench press and stuff like that. Just trying to be creative, you know, like we're running, the, we'll take like a lap around the block one time. Then we'll like just do like some jump ropes and abs and all this stuff. So I'm still able to incorporate a lot of things that we were doing at the gym, at the house. It's just those situations where, I really can't get to a football field right now because of where being on lockdown and stuff like that. What's your, uh, so in Edmonton, um, I, I'm actually living up in uh, Minot, North Dakota, um, pretty okay. close to Saskatchewan. What's your experience the nightlife in Canada? How do you, how do you like it? <laughs> um, we like it a lot. We as yeah. being as me and my wife, uh, we, we actually like it a lot, man. We, the nightlife in Canada is so much more chill than the nightlife in Dallas. Yeah, and like, that is 100% because everybody, like, they stay to themselves, man. Everybody just trying to go out and have fun, you know. Like, yeah. Dallas, you have a bunch of knuckleheads here and there that just trying to be rowdy and stuff. Like, me and my wife, we went to um, we went to a club in Edmonton, and we, we walked in, had no problems, you know. And then, yeah. for one instance, me and my wife, we walked in um, a club in Dallas, and yet 10 minutes in, it was an altercation. And I was like, yo, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can imagine. Um, you don't want to put yourself in those situations, so I'm sure that's nice to have that little bit of a relaxed, you know, atmosphere going definitely. on there for sure. And that's uh, what we, Winnipeg. I think uh, we. That's where everybody goes around here from the from base and stuff, and they they go to Winnipeg and they love it out there. They always talk about how awesome it is, and you know it's better yeah. than the states and stuff. So I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now. Um, what what are if if you don't mind me asking you know obviously I'm sure you get, you probably set goals you know each each and every every year when you're coming up for a season I know that we're a little ways out your season doesn't start till June uh, what kind of goals are you setting for yourself as far as like um, what you want to do in, in this upcoming season I mean I, I'm assuming you probably want to kind of you know 
top what you were doing last year um, or, you know, team goals, things like that? What, what do you, what do you really look forward to in that aspect? Improving. Okay. So um, I'll start with my personal goals and then I'll go to the uh, team goals. So my personal goals are to have a hundred catches this season. I'm shooting for 1800 yards and I'm, shooting to win the MLP award, which is our MVP award of the league. Okay. Um, and personally, I feel that as if those goals are well in reach, you know, because before my quarterback had got injured, I was on pace to have 100 catches and 1,600 yards, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, if I have a, like, Lord, Lord willing, I have a healthy quarterback, you know, like, Trev stays healthy the whole season and, like, I'll be on pace for my for my stats that I want uh, personally, but team goals. Of course, the ultimate goal for a team is to win the big dance, and that being a great cup for us. So that's one of the team goals that I want. Uh, I want us to achieve. Um, I know since we have a new offensive coaching staff, I want us the offensive side of the ball to have a good camaraderie going into the first week of the season. You know, like those are two goals that I want personally for the team yeah sure man um i mean it sounds it sounds you know like some pretty lofty goals and it sounds like you're you know you're definitely well within reach i mean you from what we can see i mean it looks like you're constantly improving and definitely going to be you know continue to watch i mean as you go like i mean like i said man we're we're for commerce too we try and keep up with uh, a lot of the commerce guys as they you know continue to go on and uh you know i've been watching a little bit more of the cfl watching some of the games that come on it's definitely interesting to watch, man. And, you know, we definitely wish you the best with all of it. You know, hey, Ricky, hey, Ricky real quick, Ricky, what's next, man? What's next for Ricky Collins? Oh, what's next for Ricky Collins? Uh, life. <laughs> I don't know how to attack. Yeah. I don't know how to. I don't know how NFL. To question. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm just going to leave it at life. You know, wherever life yeah. takes me, you know, that's one of those questions I have to ask the wife, like, yeah. situational wise you know like being established well established in the cfl and then going back to the nfl and starting all the way over like a rookie you know and being treated yeah. like as if i was a rookie instead of being a seasoned vet in the cfl you know yeah yeah hey congratulations by the way on the, the new marriage uh, it's thank you, you know, thank awesome you. so <laughs> but yes I mean, uh, definitely, man. And, uh, best of luck to you with everything, dude. Uh, you know, we definitely appreciate you, you know, coming on the show with us and, uh, you know, taking a little bit of time out of your night for it, answering some questions that, you know, we obviously had, um, you know, as, as far as things go, uh, you know, and just real quick before, you know, before we let you go, uh, you know, do you have any, you know, what do you have going on, um, on your end of things, you know, uh, football, non-football related, what do you, you know, anything you need to, you know, you want to shout out with us today while you got us on here, man. Oh yeah, for sure, man. Um, shout out to my uh, personal content creator, um, Iconic Visuals, um, CJ Cannon, also uh, Texas A&M Commerce alumni. Uh, we recently uh, started working together, like last week it was. And um, who else? Shout out to Big Cheese. Uh, shout out to Big Cheese. It's one of those clothing brands that me and my team are trying to get established and uh, up and running. So I mean, other than that, that's the only thing I have to shout out, man. You got a hey, you got a website, for Big Cheese? Yeah. Do you do you have a, you have a link or anything like that that you can shoot over to us? Uh, so we're in the works of getting the Big Cheese uh, website and everything set up at the moment, but okay. of course I have the uh, link to my personal uh, content creator. I can I can send his over to you guys. But yeah, sure. the biggest shout out I can give on this show. Is a big shout out to BS Academy for having a boy on tonight. <laughs> no, nah, man, we appreciate you coming, man. It, it's it's great that you that you came on. We, we, you know, really appreciate it. Uh, man, I felt like I was, you know, shooting in the dark a little bit, and I, I, I couldn't have been happier whenever you said you wanted to come on. So, I mean, I'm glad that you came on here with us, and uh, you know, kicked it with us for for about you know 20 minutes or so to kind of give us a update on you know what's going on and. In your world, um, you know, we always like to hear from it. We'd you know, be happy to have you back on anytime. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe after this next season, kind of see how things get went for you. Maybe get a little update on what's next for Ricky Collins, right? For sure, for sure, man. No problem. Whenever you guys want to hit me up and ask me to come on the show, 
I'm mm-hmm. more than sure. willing to do anything for a commerce alumni. 100%. Hey, we, we love that support, man. And we're always rooting for you. So, you know, you got a couple of fans. Maybe maybe one day I'll, I'll get the stands up there. It's only a couple hours away. So, <laughs> Come on, man. Just I'm, let me know and I got tickets for you. Hey, I I'm, I'm, I'm still in Dallas, so I'll definitely continue to watch you on ESPN whenever I see it. And uh, if bad, I ever bad. get to Canada, I'll definitely let you know. <laughs> Bro, just let me know. Like I said, I got tickets and everything. <laughs> we appreciate yeah. it, man. Hey, uh, thanks for coming on, brother. No doubt. Thank y'all for having me, man. Yep. yep. Thanks. Appreciate it, man. All righty, guys. That concludes our very first ever guest appearance that we had on here. And what an episode. We hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed recording this episode. Um, again, just a big shout out to uh, Iconic Visuals. Go check them out at xxiconicvisuals.com. Uh, those are the content creators there for Ricky that was just on the show as well. Go check out his uh, brand that he did promote a little bit on there, Big Cheese. And as always, you guys continue to like, comment, share, subscribe to our Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, everything. We appreciate the support so far. Much love, everybody. Till next time.